All right, let's keep moving this along. Gas control, let's do it. I've got all my components ordered for the gas control system. And I've got my little chart here of how everything connects. I took more care into ordering parts this time now that I knew what I was doing and was able to really min minimize the amount of parts and streamline everything. But I think I still need to buy a couple pipes, so I'm gonna kind of loosely fit everything together here. And then I can go to the store and get what I need. I'm not going to be able to get my uh, filter here close enough, so I'm going to have to get a little, maybe two inch pipe there, which I don't have, I'll have to run to the store. I also need a pipe between these two to connect. So I'll pick those up, and then I think I have about everything I need to get this hooked up. All right, that's pretty much everything. So I guess I should get this all tightened down and secured, and then I can see I'm gonna mount it on the machine and start uh, getting it all hooked up. I got my gas control system all plumbed up here, so let me uh, figure out how it's gonna mount down in the machine. I'll have a tube hooked up right here that goes to the laser cutting head. Uh, I have, this is the oxygen line, this is the nitrogen line. Um, these are both check valves. Um, this is an electronic regulator for the oxygen because it's uh, it comes out at really low PSI. And then I have both the solenoids to turn it on and this is a high pressure filter for the nitrogen and this and and regulator and this is a, a regulator and filter for the oxygen um, i don't have any uh, gas pressure sensors i use my machine for prototyping and one-off so i'm always right there watching it so i'll know if it runs out of gas so it's not really important for me but you could uh, add those in the line too if you're going to do like production jobs so to try to preemptively answer a couple questions you might have, such as uh, why don't I use a third line for compressed air? Well, I don't actually have an air compressor that's really suitable for laser cutting. It requires high pressure and volume and power that I don't have. I have a small compressor that can get me about maybe 30 to 45 seconds of cut time, which I use occasionally. So it's just not that important to me. It's easy enough for me to just plug it in through the nitrogen line uh, when I want to use it. If you were going to use compressed air often, I would definitely add another line with another check valve and solenoid um, just for the compressed air. Another potential question is um, why don't I use an electronic regulator for the nitrogen line? It's certainly way more convenient because you can use the software to set the pressure. However, an electronic regulator that can handle high pressure is considerably more expensive, like well over a thousand dollars. I'm trying to do this as cheaply as possible, so it's just not really in the budget for me. I would like to mount the gas control system somewhere right down here. I'm wondering now, seeing it like this, I'll be able to reach all the knobs and everything I need to, but I'm wondering if I should like add some elbows to these and have the, the quick connects come right out here and like maybe poke through where the door, like a hole in the door. Um, so that'll be more convenient. All right, I'm going back to the hardware store. I've got a few more fittings and modifying this real quick. Put those elbows on so now both my quick connects will be right at the back. I think that'll be much better. Now, I just need to uh, come up with a way to mount this. I'm imagining it'll go something like this. Uh, so these will stick out the door right here at the back and probably resting on some kind of rack. I decided that making 3D printed mounts would probably be the easiest. So I came up with a couple quick designs here in Fusion 360 and I'll get those printed out. I imagine them going something like that. And this should drop on here. I 
and I left holes here where I can put zip ties through to secure it around the pipes. I think I'm gonna mount it somewhere right about here. I was initially planning on putting it over on this side, but once I added the extra power supply and contactors, it's kind of in the way of the knobs. Here I can still easily reach the knobs for the pressure. Then I'll have a cutout here in the door uh, where I can plug in my gas. If I were to do this again, now knowing that, I would maybe just have the pipes come straight out and, and plug them in from the side. That way I can still open the door while they're plugged in. Um, but I'm, this is what it is, so I'm gonna move forward with it. I got all the mounts attached to the base. Now I just need to put some zip ties on here and secure it. Now we need to get the solenoids wired up and the electronic regulator for the oxygen. Now that I've found a home for my gas control system, I can get this hose uh, actually cut to length there. I'm gonna plug in right there. Actually, it looks like it's gonna go on. I need to add more 24 volt connections to my relays to finish them off. And this has just gotten out of control. So what I figured out is I'm not really utilizing this vertical raceway here. I think I'm just gonna cut it off right here and I've purchased another terminal block that I can put here for all my 24 volt connections. Got my terminal block installed for the 24 volts and everything running through that now. And I've got my relay all wired up. So let's uh, fire it up and see if it works. Cool, looks like it works. The last thing I need to do for the gas system is wire up this regulator for the oxygen. So let me go take a look at the user manual and I'll see how to get that wired up. I'm in the Raytools configuration software and I really like how they have all the gas control set up here. Um, you can choose a number of inputs and outputs depending on if you're using uh, electronic valve or not. Um, you can configure alarms. The proportional valves wired now. Um, it turns out the controller can support um, not only setting the pressure, but it can also uh, tell it when to turn on and off so I don't have to hear it buzzing all the time. So in order to do that, I had to wire another relay. And obviously I don't have any room to put anymore, so I just stuck it down here close uh, where it would be convenient. So let's power it on and test it out. The regulator seems like it's working. When I go to oxygen, blow, you can hear it turn on. And if I change the PSI, you can hear it, the frequency change. I put a multimeter on it and it is sending out a zero to 10 volt signal to it and uh, yeah, seems like it's working, cool. I think the gas control system's done. I plug in my oxygen here, nitrogen here, and if I wanna use compressed air, um, I'll plug it in here through this three-stage filter. Before this, it goes through um, an air dryer also, and then I just patch it into the nitrogen line. Um, compressed air is used at high pressure also, so it can just run through that line. At the end of this project, I'll be releasing all of the gas components I used in the bill of materials, along with a connection diagram. But I thought it was worth mentioning that Skyfire has put together a gas control kit for DIYers, and it looks like they use a lot of the similar components, um, except for the filters that I've used. So yeah, that might be a convenient way to set this up as well. I just realized I never really talked about the gas itself. This is my small compressor. It puts out 200 PSI, which is enough pressure for the materials that I'm using it for, but it doesn't have enough volume. So like I said, it can only run for about 30 to 45 seconds at a time. 
I routed up through this air dryer and then onto the three stage filter which I showed you before. I've leased these two 300 cubic feet cylinders from air gas for oxygen and nitrogen. And I got a lot of slack last time in my first video series for the prices I paid. But what I didn't clearly communicate was that I purchased the ultra high purity nitrogen that is recommended by Ray Tools, and it is expensive. Since then, I've got a lot of comments that people are just using standard industrial grade nitrogen for cutting, which is much cheaper. I've shown you most of the parts I've cut using nitrogen in videos over the past year, and this tank is just now about empty. So when I go to refill, I'll try standard grade this time to try to save some money. A quick update, I got a lot of awesome feedback in my last video about my wiring at the e-stop. And I was just learning how to use contactors. And apparently the new preferred method is to use the STO function of the servo drives. Um, so I'm probably gonna rework some of that. I don't know if I'm gonna show it in a video or not, but I just wanna make sure everybody was aware that's watching this series. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters for making these projects possible. Until next time.